Hi, I'm John Meacham. Join me and C-13 Originals for our new podcast, Reflections of History, as we look back on key moments from our past and reflect on a new piece of history each day of the week, Monday through Friday, offering a glimpse into the past and a guide for the present. Reflections of History, a podcast creation of Shining City Audio, a C-13 Originals and John Meacham Studio, available for free now on the Odyssey app or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Spring Value Days are on now at your local Value Home Centers. Yard work is hard work, but Value has the right tools for the job. Whether you want to upgrade your old grill or patio set, or you're working on your lawn or garden, this spring, do it yourself with Value Home Centers. Shop in-store or online at valuehomecenters.com and get started on your next project. Value for the do-it-yourselfer. It's D.A. on CBS Sports Radio. What's up, my brother? I want permission to come aboard the market. Asking permission to join a sports talk spaceship? Well, we're all a little crazy. The mothership has connected. The mothership, the, the, the mothership. Let's go aboard. Happy Monday to you, North America. The mothership has connected. Welcome aboard. It's the four-hour cosmic cocktail party. GA with you from the CBS Sports Radio studios in New York, broadcasting to affiliates nationwide and north of the border. Anchorage to Atlanta, Seattle to St. Pete, Kalamazoo and Waterloo A are on the air. Hey, listening, D.A., everything we say in D.A., everything. And we come to you live from the Rocket Mortgage Studios when you need cash out of your home and a simple way to get it. Rocket Ken. How we doing, everybody? Thanks so much for joining us. Good show lined up for you as we restart the week. Coming up. John Crispin, ESPN and Westwood One college basketball analyst. Of course, we'll preview Kansas, North Carolina tonight for the national championship. John will join us at the top of our number four. We'll do plenty on UNC and UNC Kansas in the final four and now the national championship game. Before we get there with John throughout the morning, also last night, the women crowned a national champion, South Carolina dominant, wire to wire in the season, wire to wire in the game. What a season for the Gamecocks of Don Staley and company. We'll talk about that coming up in 20 minutes. We've got momentous Monday in honor of our little friend, Little Mo, coming up on the show in 40 minutes. Also, from the football standpoint, Dan Snyder's been under fire for years now, but there's su- suddenly a new outcropping that could end up forcing him out in Washington. Commanders fans can only hope. Also, in Chicago... Some new details on what just went so horribly wrong for Matt Nagy in his leadership of the Chicago Bears. And to the NBA, Luka goes off yesterday, and the Nets blow a 55-point effort from Kevin Durant over the weekend. All of that coming up this morning on the show. If you want to jump in on the Final Four and last night's Women's National Championship game, Any of the NBA, NFL, hit me up at 855-212-4CBS. That's 855-212-4227. Or on Twitter, hit me, DA on CBS. We begin with Saturday night and Duke UNC. It is so, so rare in today's college basketball world, today's sports world at large, it is so incredibly rare for an event, a game, a series, whatever, to live up to the hype. Because 
there's just so much more hype than ever before. You can't escape the hype these days. It used to be your hype came from just the newspapers. Okay, so if you didn't have a newspaper in front of you, if you weren't reading the newspaper every single day, you weren't getting the hype. And then radio joined in. And then weekly sports magazines joined in. And then television joined in. But still, you could distance yourself from the hype potentially because those were all items you had to seek out. But today, with the internet and then social media and your phone attached to you at all times, you cannot escape the hype. If something's got some type of attention attached to it, there's no way to eliminate yourself from it. And so Duke, North Carolina, remember, it's the first game of the weekend, not the first game technically because Villanova and Kansas played before, but it's not the national championship game. So you have the entire week of hype from the Elite Eight on, and it's Coach K's farewell, and it's the first time it's ever happened in NCAA tournament history, and it's for a spot in the national championship game. And so it just has all of these layers of hype upon hype building on itself. And so how could that game ever possibly match that attention? Well, in one of the rare twists ever, not only did that game match its hype, I think it surpassed it. Where does that game rank? Saturday night, Duke UNC in the pantheon of great games ever. It is where we begin. You're cold open. Crossover dribble against Griffin. Gets into the paint. Dishing Manic. Three left side. Got it. Oh, Manic. Ice water in the veins. Our emphasis going into the game was to protect the paint. We've got to do a good job of keeping them away from getting layups and dunks and make them make contested outside jump shots. These guys were terrific defensively, and I'm so proud of them. Rebound secured by R.J. Davis. Davis will dribble it out, and the heels kick their rivals to the curb on their way to their 12th national title game. And in the process, in the career, of the Hall of Fame coach Mike Shashevsky, North Carolina 81, Duke 77. I don't think it ever turned in anyone's favor. I think it was a one possession game and Love hit, hit some big shots. And when we got the one point lead with just about a minute to go, you know, that's where you need to get a stop. And uh, we fouled and we did foul. And um, you can't give free shots. <laughs> Amazing, sensational, dramatic, heart-rending. It's DA's top story. Here he goes. It's your cold open. Kevin Kugler on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Those are the two coaches you heard there, Coach K, and of course, Hubert Davis. You know, the shot making down the stretch, the battle, the swings. The coaching, the players, the atmosphere, the rivalry, the stage, everything was just elite. And North Carolina's ability to not only knock down enormous shots, Caleb Love was first and foremost amongst those Tar Heels that could do that at the highest level, but also the clutch free throw making by UNC and just being a little bit better than Duke down the stretch, and to come back from the hole that they were in in that game on that stage was remarkable. And it was as though both teams really recognized what was at stake. It was as though both teams recognized just how crucial this moment in their lives were. And that's a very rare thing. I thought whether it was Caleb Love or any of the other UNC players that stepped up and played a big role. Obviously, Duke got some tremendous work out of Boncaro. 
He was tremendous in that game as well. And neither team wanted to let its program down, its fans down, its alumni down, the moment down. You could see Duke desperately trying to win this, knowing that the Coach K farewell is at stake. And you saw UNC understand the moment, seizing it, being as aggressive as possible to snatch, to take that moment away from Duke with every shot, every possession, every play. There was a real desperation on both sides and a real elite playmaking and elite players making those plays. And the roars, the sea of the crowd roiling back and forth. One shot by Duke is made. The place goes crazy. UNC comes out and makes a shot. The place goes crazy. It had so much of that. And I so rarely these days will audibly yelp or yell or cheer during a game. And yet here I was, you know, sitting next to my wife watching this game going, oh my God, what a shot. Wow, look at this. Back and forth. It just had it all. It just, the game had it all. I think it's hard to rank something like that today or yesterday or Saturday night because it just happened. You need some time. You need some space to really consider where it ranks. But for my money... The last 10 years, the last 20 years, the last 25 years of college basketball, that is a top five or top 10 game. I think it's a top top five NCAA tournament game over the last decade, no doubt, and maybe one of the best, the top three of the last decade or 20 years because it had everything. It had so much at stake. And the Coach K retirement ratcheted everything up to that 10th degree. It was as though it mattered even more than what it normally would matter. And what it normally would matter is everything. Props to UNC. Props to Hubert Davis. And this is something that I don't know if you can really put a a numerical value on. But... Hubert has alluded to this the last couple of post-game press conferences that he felt like North Carolina had become irrelevant over the last couple of seasons. And I was a little taken aback to hear that because that is kind of a shot across the bow at his head coach, Roy Williams, and he was an assistant coach. But he said, we wanted to make UNC important again. We felt like we were overlooked. We were irrelevant. I wanted to make this program great. And for a program like North Carolina, who had won three national championships under Roy Williams, it's not like they were chopped liver. And yet, he's calling out the fact that UNC wasn't really UNC the last couple of seasons. And he's not wrong. And again, I don't know how you you put a numerical value on this, but Hubert Davis taking the reins and immediately putting them back in the national championship game means that you don't lose a step or multiple steps from a transition from an all-time great to a newbie. And we don't know if that will happen at Duke. We don't know what Coach K to John Shire looks like. If Shire gets them to a national championship game next year, he will have only equaled what Huber Davis has done. So that's a pretty remarkable thing. It's not that Huber Davis has the next college basketball dynasty, but that UNC land, you don't now have to worry about, boy, a down year here, a couple of down years there, and what what do we have suddenly? Because the end of Roy wasn't great and the beginning of Hubert might not be great. Now you have all that momentum already as a tailwind behind you within that program, which, man, you go from Roy Williams to anybody, you go from Coach K to anybody, you go from Jim Boeheim to anybody, these legends of the game, you worry about what that looks like. North Carolina's playing for a national championship and did so by beating one seeds, two seeds, and ending Coach K's career. 
855-212-4CBS or on Twitter, DA on CBS. It's certainly not the moment for me to dance on Coach K's retirement. Guy's been an all-time great. Five national championships, 13 Final Fours, clearly one of the icons of sports, and he made Duke Duke. At the same time, whew, boy, am I glad that's over. Oh, man. Every time Coach K said it wasn't about me, not about me, it's not about Coach Krzyzewski, it's not about Coach K. It's like, who are you kidding? You know this is all about you, and you are reveling in it all about you. I'm just so happy for the kids. I'm so sad for the kids. I'm so proud of the kids. Now, this is really about the kids. Yeah, but really, you told everybody you were retiring before the season so that you had a full year of the swan song, of the farewell, of the good night, everybody. I'm just so proud of the kids. I'm really, really happy for the kids. I'm sad for the kids. You know, this is really about the kids. Oh, yeah, except on senior night when everybody was wearing a K on their chest. Well, you know, it's really just about the kids. They really followed their hearts. These kids, these kids, these kids. It's all about these kids. I'll have a moment to really think about my career after this is all over. But right now, it's about the kids. Right. Except for that giant sign that says Shashevskyville on campus. Right. Got it. Well, it's just about the kids, right? Eat you up with their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, North Carolina, thank you. That was appreciated. The rest of the nation owes you one. We owe you a beer. When we come back on the show, Women's National Championship last night, and what a season for South Carolina. They went start to finish, start to finish. We'll break it down next. DA, CBS Sports Radio. This is Jake Brennan, host of Disgraceland. I've partnered with Payne Lindsay, the host of Up and Vanish, to bring you an all-new season of Dead and Gone where we'll continue to delve into the history of the Grateful Dead and the mystery of their missing fans. From Tenderfoot TV and Double Elvis, season two of Dead and Gone is available now. The long, strange, deadly trip continues. Listen for free on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Spring value days are on now at your local value home centers. Yard work is hard work but Value has the right tools for the job. Whether you want to upgrade your old grill or patio set or you're working on your lawn or garden, this spring, do it yourself with Value Home Centers. Shop in-store or online at valuehomecenters.com and get started on your next project. Value for the do-it-yourselfer, do-it-yourselfer in you. Hey, it's Sue O'Neill. When I want to stock up on wine and spirits, I shop Outlet Liquor. It's the place to buy a case. Check out their $8.99 wines. Choose from hundreds of top brands like 19 Crimes, Apothic, Relax, Robert Mondavi, Private Select, Chateau St. Michel, and more. Just $8.99 a bottle every day when you buy three or more bottles. And you can mix and match your $8.99 wines, too. Never wait for a sale ad again to get a great deal on wine and spirits. Just shop Outlet Liquor for the best prices every day. Grab a surge protector. You're about to be zapped. Heading out to Table Rock. I'm not even going to say it. Forget it. What? Is Table Rock a strip club? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they were getting at. I guess it's a lake. It's a hike, you doofus. <laughs> it's D.A. on CBS Sports Radio. Left corner, fires a quick three, front of the rim, no good. Boss to the baseline, rebound. Out to Henderson, on the runner to the front court. Henderson driving left to the basket, puts it up, and in! 24 for Destiny Henderson, 57-41, South Carolina. I feel like coming into this game, you know, the conversation was about how Coach Ariema was 11-0 in title games, and but Coach Daly was 1-0, and now here she goes, she's 2-0, and I think it just shows that the type of program that she's built and, and how great it is being a dynasty. South Carolina, 
a dominant season and a dominant game last night. Welcome back. DA with you here on CBS Sports Radio. Thanks to the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network on the call. Boy, what a season for the Gamecocks. They went wire to wire as the number one team of the country. And then last night against UConn, led wire to wire as well. They were thoroughly dominant. They built an 18-point first-half lead. UConn had whittled that down to six in the second half of the third quarter, but ultimately too much South Carolina. And the way the Gamecocks dominated the glass was really impressive. They were fantastic all night long, rebounding-wise. That was a strength of the Gamecocks all season long, They dominated the glass in the Final Four. And time and again, when UConn missed, not only was it a rebound back the other way for South Carolina, no second-chance points, but South Carolina had plenty of second-chance points themselves and multiple shot possessions. That just kind of wore down UConn. They also defensively were excellent on Paige Beckers, who is a superstar in women's college basketball. And she's what makes it go for UConn. She's the next in the long lineage of superstars for the Huskies. And they just smothered Beckers. They smothered the shooters of UConn all night long. And South Carolina was every bit the best team in America this season and proved it last night. And I think it's really interesting because it happens at the expense of UConn who is the standard in women's college hoops. And Gino Oriema going into last night's game was 11-0 and in national championship games. Now, the fact that he is coaching 11 national championship games itself is insane. But he's 11-0, and or was. So he had never lost a national championship game if UConn didn't win the national championship They had not made the title game. Last night, his first loss in that spot. But that there's certainly been a bit of a changing of the guard for women's college basketball. The landscape just opened up so much more than it used to be. I mean, back in the day, it was UConn, Tennessee, or nobody in many ways. UConn had won four consecutive national championships going back to 2013, 13, 14, 15, 16. And look at these records. In 2013, Gino was 35 and 4. In 2014, they were undefeated 40 and 0. In 2015, they lost one game, 38 and 1. 2016, again undefeated, 38 and 0. So a four-year stretch where UConn not only won the national championship every year, twice they weren't handed a loss. And then the following year, 2017, it was interesting. Mraz and I were at the men's Final Four in Phoenix that year. And we were out. I'm not sure if it was the same night of Get Away From Me, Buddy. Let's put on Mraz's microphone here. I think it might have been the same night as Get Away From Me, Buddy. But on that night, we watched a Final Four game, a women's Final Four game, where it was Mississippi State against UConn. And there were some huge shots in that game. They ended up going to overtime, and Mississippi State won that game. And the entire bar was swaying back and forth with every big shot of that game. Ultimately, the Bulldogs won. But remember that? Was that the same night as Get Away From Me, buddy? It was. We started the night with a dinner, and at the dinner was where that bar and restaurant, that game was on, and everybody was into it. That was 2017. So UConn was a four-time defending world or national champ. Mississippi State beats them. South Carolina gets to the national championship game that year and defeats Mississippi State. And that was Dawn Staley's first national championship. Last night was her second. And so South Carolina has now become 
a true power broker since that year, 2017, when UConn's run of four straight was broken by South Carolina. 2017 South Carolina, 2018 Notre Dame, 2019 Baylor, 2020 was canceled, 2021 Stanford, 2022 South Carolina. We have not had a repeat champion or a champ that's won more than one since 2017. So South Carolina has now won two since 2017, and UConn hasn't won one. So that was kind of a changing of the guard, and it was always a question of when women's hoops would catch up to UConn, a lot like when would men's hoops catch up to UCLA back in the 60s and 70s, and ultimately the earth flattened in men's hoops, and now it's kind of doing the same thing in women's hoops. But remember that, Mraz, that... UConn going down in that way, in that overtime, they were four-time defending champions. Right. People couldn't believe it, and there were some huge shots made by the Bulldogs, and it felt like everybody in the entire bar and restaurant was rooting for the Aggies, or for the Bulldogs. Palpable buzz, if you remember. It was like, wow, this is like we're watching something monumental. We may never see UConn lose in a Final Four again. You're right. It was unbelievable at that time. And now, DA, I'm only left to wonder – if it's more realistic, my daughter gets into UConn as a basketball player the way they're at right now. It might be far more realistic that that Taylor ends up being one of the Huskies yeah. because now, really, she wouldn't be able to play for South Carolina, I no. think, is the, the case. Yeah, I mean, at this rate, we're talking another 16 years. Probably at the downturn, she probably gets into UConn. Her father's a Husky. She could be a Husky. <laughs> or maybe you... fa- Her father's Husky. <laughs> right. Not a husky. <laughs> right. Or maybe you duke them and you say no thanks. Huh. No, I could never do that back. I know that feeling in reverse. Wow. I'm not going to do that. Well, here's the question because I know that you and Danielle are fancying the idea of Taylor, your first daughter, your oldest daughter, becoming a, a women's basketball player because she's two and a half now? Uh, she's about to be two and a half, yeah. And she's good at dribbling. She's two and a half. Good, good length. A two and a half. She's got good length yeah. of two and a half. And your question is, you know, where do you where does she get recruited? If it's between Yukon and South Carolina in twenty forty, where's she going? I'm gonna go Yukon closer for me to get to games. Okay. So I if it takes away her winning a championship, no big deal. I want to be able to get to the game. <laughs> <laughs> and get back for football. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, she got a Saturday night game and right. the Chines a Sunday one. Sorry, sweetheart. I need to huff it back overnight. Uh-huh. Right. Well, that'll actually be the recruiting battle of 2036 or something like that. Hey, whatever it is, again, we've put the ball in our hands. She's starting to work on her craft. We, we got a lot going on at the house. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> on the same night, UConn and their run of four straight national championships ended, a few hours later... Your confidence was also ended when Aaron Rodgers told you, get away from me, buddy. Yes. And UConn's run ended the same night Aaron Rodgers hopes for ever winning a Super Bowl again <laughs> ended. That's the headline. <laughs> Two Those, dynasties yeah. ended on one night in the desert. They go hand in hand. Gino and Aaron never to win a championship again. Right, because once Rodgers told you, get away from me, buddy, you would declare he will never win a playoff game again. Yeah, we had to amend that when he won a playoff game. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's been he will never win another Super Bowl. Right, And I've been spot on. He has not. <laughs> no apology. <laughs> Until he apologizes, he has not. <laughs> Imagine this becomes a thing that Rodgers becomes desperate by the end of his career three or four years from now to win a Super Bowl. He gets wind of this story and actually says, you know what? After my cleanse, I had some clarity. I need to make amends for what I once did and actually does issue a public apology, even a private one, to Moraz. And not only that, there's rumors of him thawing his relationship with his brother. He's now maybe back with uh, Secret Life of the American Teenager Girl. I forgot her name again. Shailene. Something. Shailene, Shailene Woodley. Woodley. You know, isn't this part of the steps of the cleanse program? You're supposed to apologize? Where's my well, apology? He's not an AA. <laughs> right, still cleanse. You still apologize, he's right? not like Jerk Anonymous where he's got to make amends. But that's what people. it feels like. It feels like he went to J- JA, Jerk Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> he's apologizing to everybody. Where's my apology? You want a Super Bowl, buddy, or not? I mean, Get away from me, buddy. This would be 
I mean, one of the toughest sales ever, convincing him to have fun and come back here and apologize to Sean. I mean, I can't think of a, of a tougher pitch to present to somebody to get the yes you want. Also, is he on an exclusive deal with McAfee? Is, is he allowed to go on any other radio show through the history of time? Well, yeah, he doesn't trust any of them. He only trusts the former player. I think that's that's what it is, yeah. But you know what? Again, get rid of your exclusive deal. Is winning important to you? And if you're a Packer fan right now, I urge you to write letters to the Packers demanding Rodgers apologize. <laughs> write letters <laughs> like it's 1961. Hey, John Mara reads him. Somebody in Green Bay, Gutenkins, he's got to read him. Let's go. You think our guy Goody's reading letters? Gunty, Goody, my, my man. Gunty, my man. Uh, let Aaron know he needs to send an apology this way or you ain't getting a ring. Maybe Fix we, the whole locker room. Maybe we should maybe we should send you to Packers training camp oh. to explain personally what has happened. I'm not facing him in the eye again until he comes to me. <laughs> I, I think, was mortified that night. I got now. I got to pack my bags, a layover in Milwaukee, get to Green Bay. I got to go to camp. I got to look at him again. Hope he doesn't stiff arm me again when he's been nothing but a jerk to people. And then what if I go back hat in hand and I don't get the apology? Now I'm seething. I'm in O'Hare in a layover on the way home. Nobody needs that. I think the play is scan their roster, find the veteran guys who have been there the longest without a title. And start with them. Tell them the story. Get them on your side. Call. And have them go to him and be like, dude, That's we got to really fix call. this. That's a really good call. All right. Yeah, you get Bakhtiari on the show maybe. right now, and you start pitching this to him, and you're in. And just, that's, how, that's how this begins. Yeah, doesn't Zach Gelb have, like, a 14-year center that joins them from... You know, he gets Kuhn on a lot, right? He gets John Kuhn on a lot. I... I I define a lot. I think he had him on once last year, but oh. if he gets him on a lot, I can talk to him. Yeah, I'll t- no, I'm sure Zach Gelb's got somebody. Somebody in Green Bay went to Temple that Zach puckered up to, I'm sure, <laughs> that we could find. But him and Gino, no titles together since the 17 night that ended with Jack in the Box. <laughs> That night ended with a jack in the box. By the way, that means second dinner. That night ended with second dinner. <laughs> right. We can put ourselves right where we can put ourselves in the spot where UConn's run of four straight championships ended. That was the first huge meal of the night. That it <laughs> I had a steak. Then it continued to a night of copious amounts of beers because that's what gave you the confidence to go up to Aaron Rodgers and show him a picture of you naked in Central Park. What about 15 Chip Kelly Coronas in the middle there? And then after that, it ended with me, you, and Kenny Brock in an Uber going through a Jack in the Box drive through yeah, Tipping the Uber driver in cash to take us to Jack in the Box. That was a bad decision. <laughs> a horrendous life decision. I woke up with decision. taco shell on my bare stomach. A horrendous life decision. Andrew Bogus is a kind sir. He's got our headlines. AB, what do we got? We got headlines sponsored by Progressive. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive save over $700 on average. Let's go back to Minneapolis and Gino Ariema's perfect record in the national title game until last night. Again, 11 for 11 until South Carolina overwhelmed his Huskies. And the audio will play. Play in three, two, and one. We knew tonight that if we didn't, if we didn't hold our own on the boards, that it was going to be a really bad night for us, and that's exactly what happened. So is Bilotti now sabotaging the board? Feels like for it. folks that fill in for him, hides audio clips, and now is laying booby traps on the board. Morash's microphone was was not my fault. No, this, this, that was up. But yeah, a lot the, of problems here. Wi-Fi's down. Phones are broken. Pots are broken. It's a bad <laughs> scene back here. <laughs> Shep's been fingerprints on too much stuff. <laughs> uh, as Gino said, the Gamecocks grabbed 25 more rebounds, hit 16 more free throws last night to coast to that 64-49 victory into their second national title, making them the eighth program with more than one. Aliyah Boston, a most outstanding player after 11 points and 16 boards, Destiny Henderson throwing in a career-high 26. Now the focus shifts to North Carolina and Kansas in New Orleans. The winner gets Roy Williams in perpetuity. Tar Heel big man Armando Baycott says he'll play (laughs) after twisting his right ankle against Duke. Is anybody happier than Roy Williams these days? Do you think that his enthusiasm on Saturday was because he was so happy for North Carolina or because they were just sticking that 
that screwdriver into Coach K and twisting. I think A, he's happy for Hubert Davis, and he shows that you know he's handing the keys over right there. But B, it's got to be so sweet saying, bye-bye, Coach K. Have fun. See you he later. He loves it. You don't yes. get the happy ending. He is so excited. He was so excited to see Coach K <laughs> shoved <laughs> off of the boat. <laughs> he was, like, fired up. Uh, and Hubert cried, by the way. I, I was so happy he cried. So that there was you so go. essential. He cried again? He had to, Dia. This is my point. He can't cry by beating St. Peter's and then not cry. It shows that making the Final Four would be more important than making the National Championship game, which it was not. And it was beating St. Peter's, a 15 right. seed. Which, tonight if they win, forget about it. That's the Kleenex, you know, name image, image likeness we need. That's waterworks. We need big tears. Yeah, do you like need him laying on the floor, like face in arm, like slapping the court crying? Yes. Okay. I need him on his back like Dikembe Mutombo holding the basketball, <laughs> okay. weep, weeping openly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's got the stool, too, which I hate, but that's an interesting prop for a post-game crock. He's sitting on the stool, head and hand sobbing, looking up at the sky sobbing. No, this has to be, like, emotional. Multiple members of your family have died sobbing. When does he When does he cry, though? Does he cry yeah. post-game? Does he cry cutting down the net? Does he cry on the post-game interview right on the court? That starts the waterworks. Does he cry yeah. cutting down the net, or does he cry at the post-game podium? Well, it depends on the game. If the game is... If, it's, if they're cruising to a win and those final seconds are just a coronation, he's crying in that moment. He's crying immediately in the final 10 seconds before we even get to a handshake, a scissor, a ladder. The tears are immediate. But if the game is close to the last shot, then there might be a delay. Is it dabbing your eyes, sniffle, I'm so emotional, or is it ugly cry? (gasps) Look, it could be a dab in your eyes at one point, but at some point with a microphone in your face, it's got to get ugly. It's got to get ugly. DA, we've now, we have to progress on tears. I disagree. It can't be the same <laughs> tears from St. Peter's. You're winning a national championship. This has to be the craziest tears you've ever seen in life. He's now the crying guy. That's it. You've established yourself as the crier. Keep crying. Yeah, he needs to, like, walk away from Tracy Wolfson. Like, he's got to say, I can't do this. And just kind of just make noises and wander off so Baycott can take over. Pat, you disagree? Yeah. I Again, this would be the third time crying. The little sniffles are good. You know, when and Tracy will point out, you're crying again. You're crying again. You're a grown man. You're crying again. But um, no, he can't. He can't lose it because then, it, then it's then he'd be making it about himself if he's <laughs> if he loses it and has to walk away from a post game interview. No, it's a great recruiting tool. You want to play for the coach that cries, do you? I think if you cry when you win the national championship, look how much he cares. I need to go play for him. What's going to happen if he keeps winning national championships and going to Final Fours? Well, I think a Tom Brady cries his first Super Bowl. Now he's chucking Lombardi's. I think the crying could wear off. But okay. The first one, <laughs> you've established the precedent. You better cry. <laughs> uh, one other college basketball note. Thad Mott is coaching again, returning to Xavier, who, again, won the NIT despite firing Travis Steele mid-bracket. Uh, Mott has not coached since a forced exit from Ohio State back in 2017. He was an associate AD at Indiana this school Wait, year. Wait, I thought Thad Mott was going to Butler. Oh, what did I say, Xavier? Yeah. I'm sorry. He used to be the Xavier coach. He is going to Butler. That was just a brain cramp, and I wanted to write a Travis Steele joke. I apologize. He's the head coach of Butler. Good catch, Mraz. He also was the head coach of Butler for, for a year. One year yeah. before he went to Xavier. Right. Wow. Yeah. He's got the bulldog mentality. Butler assistant, Butler head coach, Xavier, Ohio State, nothing. Back to where it began. My bad. Sorry, Travis Steele. <laughs> NBA last night, Kyle Lowry played somewhere where he used to play. Details. <laughs> <laughs> Don't matter. Pre-game introduction, standing ovation, yay. It meant the world to me, um, you know, for the fans to um, show their appreciation, give me an ovation like that. Uh, it was one of those days where the first time was always special. Lowry had points. He had assists. His team scored more than the other. Miami keeps a two-game <laughs> lead on the Celtics at top of the East. The Sixers clinched the playoff spot with a 112-108 win in Cleveland. Joel Embiid, 44 points, 17 rebounds, three assists, and five blocks. The Clippers dumped the Pels, 119-100, to lock themselves into the eighth seed out West. The Warriors thumped the Kings, 109-90, and the Spurs took care of the Blazers, 113-92. Their magic number for the 10 seed is down to two. Tiger Woods calling Tiger Woods a game-time decision for the Masters this week. He practiced at Augusta again yesterday, and he's on the press conference schedule tomorrow morning. The Oakland A's shipping lefty Sean Manaya to the Padres yesterday for two minor leaguers. And from the NHL, the Oilers pushed their win streak to 4-6-1 in Anaheim. 
Leon Dreisaitl scored his 50th goal and got to 100 points. DA, back to you. Excellent. Thank you, Bogues. When we come back on the show, it's a momentous Monday. Inspiration in sports. DA, CBS Sports Radio. Smiling like little Mo every morning. It's a momentous Monday. Hey, every day can be a better day despite the challenge. All you gotta do is leave it better than you found it. It's gonna get difficult to stand but hold your balance. I just say whatever cause there is no way you're bound. <laughs> <laughs> I just think people should know that if you stay positive, everything will be fine. You just eat, drink, and breathe positive thoughts. That's all you got to do, and everything will be good. We appreciate you being with us on this fine Monday morning. And for the record, the DA show is always available on your phone to stream. Use the CBS Sports app or the Odyssey app. Either one of those will work. Both of those are free. And you could also watch us for free at watchda.com. Our momentous Monday story of the day comes to us from Las Vegas. And since the Women's National Championship was decided last night, today's honor goes to a women's basketball coach, Lindy LaRock, who is the head coach of UNLV. Took over a program that was really in the basement And people wondered, well, what can you do? How can you build this? What's a reasonable expectation for a losing program? And she was very unconventional in her attitude, in her approach. But she was a former player. And she felt as though she could tap into players' abilities who didn't even know they had those abilities by believing in them. And she got to where she was by being a gym rat. She was actually born and raised in Las Vegas. And when she was young, was a ball girl for both the men's and women's team at UNLV. She went on to become an all-state player at Durango High in Las Vegas and then have an elite career playing-wise at Stanford to return home to take over the running Rebels. And she always talks about how impactful those young experiences were when she just wanted to chase the basketball for the big kids, for the stars, for the people that she thought were superstars and celebrities the men's and women's team at UNLV. And so she grew up around the program. She grew up chasing basketballs, being a ball girl, to then elevate all the way to being the head coach there and leading them to their first ever regular season Mountain West Conference Championship and first ever Mountain West Tournament title. It's the power of positive thinking, especially when you're really young, to look at something that you really are passionate about and say, I'm following that, but then use that belief because you came from somewhere that you could never imagine getting to, and then passing that on to others. And her players are always like, I didn't see that in myself. I didn't think I could do that. I thought she was crazy, but it ended up that it was the smartest thing ever, and she's elevated everybody around her. So I love that story of just complete commitment and doing it from a time you were a kid going from the ball girl of the program to the head coach of the program is just awesome. So that is today's momentous Monday story. I really enjoyed watching the women's NCAA tournament this year. A lot of cool stories. The fact that UConn got all the way to a national championship game after how up and down their regular season was, the injury to Paige Beckers, the instant classic, In the Elite Eight, there was just a lot of fun things about this women's tournament that also, from South Carolina standpoint, they were thoroughly dominant all season long. And Dawn Staley has instantaneously become one of the great coaches in college basketball, men or women. Staley is just absolutely killing it right now. And her second national championship, she's built the Gamecocks into a total powerhouse. And what can't Dawn Staley do? 
She's fiery. She's intense. She's smart. She's an all-time decorated player herself. She's an all-time great in the WNBA, now an all-time great college coaching-wise. What a career it has been for Dawn. When we come back here on the show, lots to get to on the men's side of the Final Four. But let's talk a little NFL coming up here next. Dan Snyder's under fire yet again, and something this is what could finally bring him down. That's next. I'm Rick Martinez. I'm Carla Lolly Music. And we're the hosts of a new podcast from Pineapple Street Studios called Borderline Salty. Rick and I are cookbook authors and friends and have spent years working in test kitchens together. So when it comes to the intimidating task of seasoning your cast iron skillet or the latest internet food trend that you can't quite figure out, we've got your back. On Borderline Salty, we want to help you become a better, smarter, happier cook. Listen to Borderline Salty now on Odyssey, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. Spring value days are on now at your local value home centers. Yard work is hard work, but value has the right tools for the job. Whether you want to upgrade your old grill or patio set, or you're working on your lawn or garden, this spring, do it yourself with Value Home Centers. Shop in store or online at valuehomecenters.com and get started on your next project. Value for the do it yourself. 